So uh, tonight on the uh, No Name Radio Show, uh, podcast, whatever the hell you want to call this thing, <laughs> um, we got uh, Corey Michael. I appreciate you hopping on, man. Yes, sir, man. Thanks for having me. It's, I've been looking forward to it. Steve yeah, Tom. I appreciate Tyler. it. He's a good dude. Yeah, we, we, we call of him, too. We just try not to let him hear it. Uh, uh, this is Matt Willis. He's a buddy of mine. He lives in West Tennessee also. What's up, man? So, How you doing, brother? Good to meet you. Yes, sir. Um, I guess we'll, we'll start out with uh, what, what part of the world are you uh, from and, and, and where are you? You know, what part of the world are you currently in? I'm a uh, Texas boy through and through. I was born and raised in Odessa, Texas, and uh, which is like west deserty, like uh, dry heat. And um, currently, I'm in the DFW area, so I got you. Worth area, um, which is a little more humid, still got the heat. Um, still Texas boy. I was in Nashville for the last six years and just moved back here about a year ago. So I got you. Um, so you were in Nashville for a while when. I guess what made you uh, what made you come over to Tennessee for a little bit, man? So in the, in 2016, I uh, I started cutting a record with my buddy uh, Noah Henson, uh, and if that sounds familiar, he's uh, the Dreadhead guy that is in Brantley Gilbert's band. He's a guitar player, producer in his own right, done some really cool things, and um, cut a record. And then I thought, man, it's time to go to Nashville and see what's going on. And, uh, made a lot of mistakes in the six years I was there and you know, didn't, um, didn't have a whole lot of fruit come from it. Minus a lot of good relationships and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I thought it was the next step, man. I thought it was the next step and uh, learned a lot. Learned a lot while I was there. I was going to say that. What are, what are a few of the, the, I guess we probably know a lot of the cons, but what are some of the, what are, what are some of the uh, pros? I mean, we're Tennessee guys, but we're not necessarily just 100%, you know, uh, love Nashville guys either. So, I mean, we don't have to make this a bash Nashville uh, podcast, but also, I mean, my hope is uh, other people that are maybe doing the same thing are, are watching too. So, you know. Yeah, man, I, um, uh, you know, I moved there and I spent like the first couple of years just kind of, I was still coming back to Texas gigging and whatnot. And then I uh, finally got into the scene, maybe like two and a half, three years into it. And um, really, really kind of dug in, like started meeting a bunch of people, like going out, doing the riders rounds and all that, and riding with different people, which being from Texas, man, it's, uh, it's not natural for me to write with other people because when I, where I grew up in Odessa, it was always just uh, me riding by myself. There wasn't, I didn't have any buddies that, we didn't co-ride. I didn't co-ride. It's way more spread out. And so you kind of learn to do it yourself and you kind of get used to it. Uh, but I got to um, I got to Nashville and started getting in there and gotten some co-rides, man. I got way better at songwriting, in my own opinion, uh, you know, from outsider's opinions as well. I think it's, uh, it's great for that, man. There's so much talent in Nashville. Um, we have, you know, artists that are, that you would, never believe wouldn't make it into something that you know might not because it's so saturated there's a lot of talent um, and that goes kind of for everywhere but um you know in nashville you could find a great band like that but they're also playing with yeah. 50 cats and so because uh, they gotta survive yeah they gotta survive and um so you just gotta really figure out a way to stand out and um, i tried to not really conform too much to the way that nashville kind of works um, a lot of people, uh, you know, and that's, there's nothing that's wrong with it, but a lot of people go down to Broadway and, you know, play cover songs and thinking that it's just going to be a, um, a step in the right direction. And then a lot of them get just stuck down there because you're making so good of money. You're having a good time. You're playing music. That's what you want. To it's do. like, if that's what you're wanting to do, then great. But if, it, if you're trying to be an artist, yeah, it so might not lead to more. So what I think I found out is that, you know, Nashville is um, more geared towards, uh, well, I guess if you're an artist who writes their own songs um, and doesn't, you know, really rely on the outside cut kind of thing, then um, it's not the place to, to end up. It's a good place to go and learn and grow. And learn. Yeah. 
And I think that that is, uh, you know, that was huge in where I'm at right now. Like, I, I guess, I guess you would learn a lot more just because, like you said, the, 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 I mean, I guess in some ways being being saturated is is a is a negative thing, but in some ways it's a it's a positive thing because you're gonna naturally meet people that are like you. Mm-hmm. And way better. You get there, you're thinking that you're really good, and then you realize how <laughs> slap in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell people that all the time, man. When you go down, I mean, just for instance, uh, I mean, we live two and a half, two and a half, you know, hours away from Nashville, so I can get there pretty quick. And and to be straight up honest, when you, I'd rather go there than go to Memphis to see a show a lot of times, oh, yeah. uh, just because of the danger of Memphis. But um, you, I it's, tell people this fair. all the time: you can you can walk down the street. You know, walk down Broadway at, a, at 2 o'clock on a Wednesday and you'll hear people playing stuff and think, damn, that's really good. Go straight to the next place. That's super good. You know, just yeah. it don't matter what time of day you're going out there. The talent level is just, it's mind-blowing. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. It's mind-blowing. 100%. And not only that, but the library of songs and people know just it, it'll blow my mind because me being a music guy, you know, I may give you a B-side track off of a, an album from 1973, and then people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, th- I think I know which one you're talking about, and just play it like they never played it before in their life and play it like he always had played it. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a different world down there, man. It's uh, so much talent, and it's crazy how much talent gets passed by down there, too. It's insane. So what, what – um... I guess what we talked about, what made you go to Nashville? What, you know, when did you decide, okay, I'm, you know, I've, I've gotten what I can get out of this. Let's go home. It's run its course. Yeah. Uh, so I was at about the maybe fifth or sixth year I started, or maybe about fourth or fifth year, I started getting a little antsy, like, you know, something's got to happen. Something's got to move. Like it seems that, um, you know, after COVID, a lot of things changed in Nashville. Uh, I feel like the whole scene, even since I moved uh, there in 2017 to when I moved out last year, like it was, uh, the scene changed a lot. Um, and you probably know that, but, you know, it's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot more Las Vegas now than it used to be. A lot more. It, it, and, you know, it, it, it just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a, a, um, you know, it's it's not as much about the music, right. you know. I, I'm sure it's still there. It's just not on Broadway. Agreed. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely there. I think, but um, like, yeah, not on Broadway. And uh, you know, I started you know thinking about things, and I think that uh, whenever I realized that you know somebody who writes their own songs and does this and this, I'm like, I I tried to. I got a lot of no's just by people not responding or not you know letting me into shows as. And then I see peers, you know, with less experience and things like that, you know, get into those shows. And it's like, okay, I, I get it. Like, I understand. Um, some people play the game and some people don't. But um, it's a... Uh, some people probably like the game and some yeah. don't. You know, or, or it's just more natural to some than it is others. See, but I'm... I, I My personality I'm, wouldn't go for that either, so... Yeah, that's fair. I think I'm, I mean, a lot of those cats are like 20 years old, 22, 24. Um, and, you know, I'm going to age myself, but I'm 38 years old. I've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, I'm right there with you, man. I, me and you pretty much. And they, the and, they, and they don't know any, that's what they know right. is that yeah. game. And so, you know, I've started in Texas, went there. And so I got a, I feel like I got a pretty good handle on how things work. We're always learning and trying to figure it out because it's, changes especially with social media and even TikTok and we'll get into that I'm sure later but it's a uh, um, uh, it's got its pros and cons man just like you said it's a good place to be in a, in a bad it's place. all about what you make of it I guess you could say you know there's there's all kind of things you can get into for sure when you when you decided to go back home, did you already have some some things in the work there or did you go back and, and kind of have to have to start from scratch again or how i mean was it real difficult or, or how did that go i made it difficult on myself i don't think it was uh, difficult but um i moved back and um i spent the first couple of months just almost going to a bar and you know you get that kind of like 
I, I don't know. It was just a weird interim stage. And then finally, whenever I got out and um, I made my home Magnolia Motorland, which is a staple in Fort Worth. And um, Bill Corbin talked highly of that when we had him on. Uh, yeah. He was. Mm -hmm. It's man, it's great. It's a it's a good cultivation of um, uh, songwriters and artists around the DFW area. It's a good community, um, and uh, so I found that made that my home. You know, I started to kind of grow that way. Um, ended up lucking out and winning a songwriting contest at Mags and. Uh, Magnolia Motor Lounge, and um, that's what I'm working on right now is recording that. And without that, I don't know if I'd be recording any music right now. But you know, it's been a it's been a great experience. I think I'm in the right spot for sure. Well, so that so you you definitely found more of a community of what you're looking to do when you when you stumbled into the Magnolia. Absolutely, yeah. Just uh, you know, and it keeps that's cool. Dude, now I host the songwriter night there on Tuesday nights and. Um, you know, I just kind of made them accept me, you know what I mean? I'll go in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, like your dog when you're busy, but you got it, you got to pet it, right? That's a, you yeah. force it. Yeah. What, so, so did that, I mean, so when you kind of got into that songwriter's night thing, I mean, how, I'm sure that is another way of, um, of, of networking that, you know, just a different way than what you were doing in Nashville. Right. Yeah. My goal was to kind of, you know, meet songwriters here, build my band was kind of the main thing. And uh, that was kind of what drew me out and, you know, trying to find players. Uh, but it ended up being just finding a cool community of musicians and artists and writers and people that, you know, care about good music, original music, stuff that um, we're not trying to be a cookie a cookie cutter uh, kind of a thing like it's it's away from the machine um a lot of the you know a lot of the stuff that comes out of writers in nashville is just trying to be a hit and uh it it takes out i think in my opinion i think it takes out a lot of the uh emotion realness. And like the realness yeah. right like absolutely one guy's the, the story one guy's story out you know? that's right um, and a lot of times it's easier too. Like it, you know, it helps, but, but um, you know, I think for the most part, you know, being back here, it, it just, it feels real, you know, it feels like I'm, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do where I'm supposed to be. Real is yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. Authenticity goes a, a long way. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's where in the songs stick around and don't, they're not gone in a month. Agreed. Yeah. The test you know. of time. Mm hmm. I mean, it's always been cookie cutter, though. I mean, it's just it's just had its, you know, I mean, back in the day, I mean, everybody recorded the same song all the time, you know. So, Absolutely. you know, if it was a hit for one person, they'd have 10 more people record it. So it's always been, it's just different now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, a, it's just corporate, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that. People like it. Let's make more. That's yeah, right. but the, the, then you then you then you dig a little deeper and people that that really dig deeper were listening to Guy Clark and Towns Van Zant and. It was still there. It was just a different, different time, different. It was a different circumstance, but still, it's it's, it's still real similar. It's crazy how much it's uh, just like a big revolving wheel, man. It just keeps coming back to what it was, going around to what it used to be, coming back to what it was. Yeah, but like you said, the the substance is the one that people are, you know, nobody was remembering the cookie cutter version of you know, of of. You know, nobody's remembering the 12th person that recorded a hit song, you know, the same hit song uh, back in the day. But but they remember, uh, you know, all those guys that wrote and did, you know, there's a reason why there's Willie and Waylon and, you know. Now, on the contrary, have you heard of Jared Morris? Mm hmm. Yeah, we had him on for a half of a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> he got he got he got banned in the middle. He said a, he said a magic word and he got banned in the middle of the. I don't know. What so he scheduled he scheduled again though. So he got his he got his. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, he's been putting out all those like uh, cowboy cover tunes, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, because one, like those are songs I've never heard before. I didn't grow up on country music, so there's a lot of stuff that, um, and that's a good thing too. Like people that don't grow up on country music that. Um, are listening to other artists because 
whatever. We need to go back to that. I mean, I, mean, I grew up on country music, but I didn't grow up on those cowboy songs. Right. Yeah, that's. Fair. I grew up on honky tonk songs, you know, smoky Hillbilly. bar songs. Not, yeah, that not. Uh, you know, I wasn't listening to uh, to you know a lot of the songs that he's releasing. So it it did. Um, he 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 does a great job on them. Even the uh, the pop rock uh, covers um, that he's that he's done the Foo Fighters and that uh, was it Rihanna. I think he covered one of her one of her songs. And, he right. did. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, man. I de- he's definitely finding himself a lane, and it's cool to watch. In fact, he was back to that songwriter contest at Magnolia Motorlines. He was one of the judges, um, and uh, it's cool to be able to connect and um, I guess it's another thing man they're, they're just, you didn't know him beforehand absolutely yeah. great now some shows for him we've had a good I mean we're buddies now and it's cool that's cool I mean I'm sure I'm sure it helps with the pluses and the and the negatives of, along the way you know with everybody um kind of you know like don't do don't do that or you know what I mean the um and and the and the positive parts too you know i'm sure everybody's learned from each other 100 percent, man i got an older brother so i'm no stranger to that <laughs> what, <I'm> in trouble <laughs> well you mentioned the uh the that you didn't grow up on country music so what what did you grow up what was the you know what i guess what was the early part what was the early <laughs> music that was around your house and then also you know what was teenage Corey? listening to uh, teenage Corey was listening to a lot of uh, i grew up on in a very like christian household um and, and i'm still like a, i'm still a god-fearing man but the uh it was a lot of christian um worship music it was a lot of christian rock christian rap uh pillar pod um like you probably want dynamic twins they were probably one of my favorite there's a lot of uh, that, and then one day my brother, um, so my brother's a geek, and he has, like, whenever CD burners first came out, like, he was one of the first dudes with a CD burner, I felt like, and mm-hmm. we couldn't listen to anything but Christian music in the house, and my brother came home with an Eve 6 CD, and, uh, you know, he was playing it in his room, and I was like, hey, man, what's that? And he said, uh, it's Eve 6. I was like, are they Christian? He's like, no. I was like, hey, burn me a copy. He said, Don't tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the one with inside out yeah, that was that yeah i had and then like uh, this dave matthews band so it all kind of went uphill from there i don't want to say downhill because that's that's music baby. no we all we all grew up on i hear people talking about i mean these days uh creed seems to be uh trending all over again and uh i'm like man i, I mean I stop liking them yeah, exactly. Me either. Exactly. Nickelback yeah. too, man. That's if a, that's cheesy, I've been cheesy for a long time. Man, people could say what they want to say, and they used to hate on them, but everybody in that era that was in that era was listening to that music. They say they I've, weren't. They are lying. I've seen them twice. It's a, uh, yeah, man. It's People are crazy. Absolutely, <laughs> man. So that's what, that's what um, you were listening to, I guess, in, you know, your – in your teens, um, what music made you uh, want to? What did you start playing? I guess, or Matt, you got something you want to add on that part? Well, I just, I just wanted to see where his musical background came from. Like, was people in your household or your parents play, or where did you start picking up the music? To, did you? I mean, I know we listen to what you want to listen to and what you grew up listening to, but where did the playing singing writing music where did that where did that start and kind of uh i guess who inspired you to want to do that you know what was you listening to to say man i want to do that or you know whatever Mm -hmm. you know i remember being a kid and my parents gave me this elvis cassette tape or it was like a it was like a hit and it had like elvis it had like blue moon it had like you know it had heartbreak hotel blue moon from i don't remember the band name or whatever but i know what you're talking about it had all those songs on there and um I, you know elvis was kind of the guy that made me want to be in music and um it skipped a generation my grandfather was a drummer in a um in a band in the um, air force and they you know in thailand and germany and all that kind of stuff they he was 
you know, plan since he was in the Air Force. But um, and so I guess it skipped a generation. My dad doesn't do anything. My mom doesn't do anything. My brother plays trumpet and uh, or played trumpet. I don't know if he does anymore. Right. Long gone from that. But you know, I played drums uh, starting in about seventh grade, and you know, I was on the drum line in junior high and high. Uh, not in high school. I quit band to be in a band. <laughs> gotcha. You know, I was a drummer doing that, and then, you know, went through some relationship woes. Got out of that Christian rock band, and um, had a nice couple, a uh, couple year period of just jacking around on the guitar. Really, I sold my drum kit because I was in a an apartment at that point, and um, that was my excuse. I just needed a change of life. I think change of scenery and. Um, couple years down the road I met another girl and uh, that's all she did was listen to country music and so I was like I better start listening to country music and it was all Texas country music and that's when I fell in love with country music man it was Randy Rogers, Josh Abbott, you know Wade Bowen, um, all Charlie this- Robinson all that stuff. Oh yeah all of it. Pat Green um, even some folks that aren't in it anymore but uh, but it was a lot of a lot of that and then I started writing songs and um, deciding I wanted to, I knew I'd, I always knew I'd be in music full time. I, I knew that that was going to be my, my way, but I didn't know where in music. I didn't know if I was going to be a drummer somewhere or, you know, I led worship at church for a little while. Um, and so yeah. you're just a music fan in, in general first. Yeah. And I'm not great at anything, but you know, I make it work. I think <laughs> Trust me, completely understand. Just keep, keep like you said, bug them until you, <laughs> until they let you in, right? Yeah, but fell in love with country music, and uh, the rest is history. Man, I know a lot. I know a lot of people that uh, that um, are way better uh, than me, and, and way better than a, a, a lot of people. Uh, but they don't uh, put the foot forward and 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 try to, you know. I mean, I just play music, and I'm 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 a proud cover band person because that's just that scratches my itch, and that's you know it's just a hobby. Yeah, exactly. I think at the end of the day, you just want it to be fun, right? You just want to have a good yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody has different goals. I mean, I'm a I'm a I'll, I'll play you know I'll I'll go to a concert on Friday night and then go cover that person's song song on Saturday night, you know. So, but that's just fun for that's my escape from the real world. Uh, but, um, but I could, you know, I just, I don't know. I can see where, um, both sides of the coin for sure on that. When did you, when you were starting to write songs like that, were you already playing out or anywhere besides the, the Christian rock band or were you writing, trying to write songs first? No, I was trying to, Whenever I started playing out, I had written maybe like five or six songs, and um, then I was playing some cover tunes. I was like covering Damn Quells, uh, and I was covering like Josh Adder, Randy Rogers, those guys. And, um, but yeah, it was maybe I'd written maybe five or six songs before I started playing out. Playing but you were, out. but that was already part of the goal. Was the, the, that was the, your mindset? You didn't just start playing covers. You you started writing music right off the yeah. bat, and then when you went, and I got you. Yeah, that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't get me going to, um, like, and I don't mind learning other people's music. That Don't get me wrong. If I like a song and I want to play it out, then I'll learn it. But um, what really gets me going is to, you know, be able to write something and write something that I like and then find out that other people like it and then maybe it um, grabs somebody some way. In fact, you know, just recently with all this TikTok junk, it's like, it's, you know, it's a lot it's fulfilling in a way um, because that's what I want is for people just to enjoy and get something out of my music. How have you uh, navigated the, the TikTok thing? How did, how did, I mean, I'm sure you got started in it just cause it was, you know, it was happening at the time. Um, and I'm sure uh, like with me, my daughter was like, you know, you should just post your music on, you know, dad, you should get on Facebook around TikTok. And I'm like, I'm not going to dance. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll stick, I'll stick to Facebook. And she's like, no, no, no. Yeah. You know, she just rolls her eyes. You don't have to dance. Just post the same songs that you post everywhere else. Just do it on, just do it on TikTok. Like, but how did you, 
Um, how did you stumble into all that? And did you start when you started getting some reactions from some of your 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 original songs? Like how how did that go? So I precursor. I hated TikTok when it first came out because I wasn't nice. I wasn't going to dance and yada yada. yada. Um, and now retrospect, I wish I would have got on it as soon as it started. Um, yep. Because I'm sure that numbers would be insanely better than they are now. Less saturated. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because they were just trying. I think at that point it was just trying to make whoever be whatever. Like it was just everybody goes. You know what I mean? So. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so then I started um, seeing, you know, buddies of mine that I'd met in Nashville. In fact, Trey Lewis is one of them. Uh, and I, I'm sure you've heard of Trey. He's oh yeah. <laughs> The way that he got into the game, you know, full head of steam was interesting, but I thought he's, I think he's done a great, um, I didn't, I don't want to say the name of the song. I don't know what's going to get me. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. But, um, you know, it. Uh, I saw him turn those people into real fans and um, it was just kind of cool to watch that kind of stuff happen to different folks that I've you know, been in contact with doing the same thing. And I thought, man, What's it going to hurt if I just treat it like their music videos or I just put my original content on there? I don't have to dance. I don't have to make some stupid content. Um, I was more afraid of going viral for something that I didn't want to go viral for. Yeah. You know, it needs, and for me, it, it needed, I don't, it doesn't, fame or none of that doesn't matter. Like, none of that matters to me. Um, I just want people to hear my music. And that's you know, a little byproduct of, you know, where I want my music to go for sure. But, that's not the goal. So it was a lot for me to get on this platform. So did you, did you start, um, you know, how was that when I'm, I'm assuming you got some reaction, you know, from some of your original songs that, you know, and yeah, uh, the first one that did well was, um, damn, I need a drink. And, uh, it started to do well and I got excited about it and I was like, well, I got to put out the song. And so I put out the song and did, decently well and then um i was lackadaisical on tiktok after that for a little while you know i did another one um blame it on me was the next one that did real well and it uh it showed up in spotify like that it started doing a lot of stuff on spotify um damn i need you playlisted for me and it was so you could you could see the 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 numbers correlate from your it's the best marketing I've ever had as far as, you know, translating into actual streams or fans or anything like that. It's, um, people are looking for that kind of stuff. And have you ever had somebody say, you know, come from to a show and, and say that they found you through social media or something like that? Yeah. I had this guy after a show catch me at like a seven 11 or some convenience store. I don't know what it was, but he came up to me. As I was walking out, he's like, "Hey, man, uh, you're on TikTok, right?" And I was like, <laughs> "Blame it on me." Did really well, and by really well, blame it on me. I think I only had like forty thousand views on the thing, and um, like I thought that was really well at that point. And mm-hmm. this guy had seen it, and uh, it was kind of it was interesting. I didn't expect anything like that at all, but yeah, it was. You know, there's been some folks say that. That's cool, Matt. You got a question? Yeah, that, I mean that's. I'm, I'm sure that helps though. Put it in, in bring it to real life though, you know, where it's not just on your phone and a number. I'm sure it, you know, putting a face with in a, in a compliment in person. I'm sure, um, gives some motivation. You definitely want to, like at the end of the day, I want to sell tickets, right? Right. Absolutely. Like Spotify and all that should take care of itself, but tickets are where you know you build good fan, like lifelong fans, and um, that's. Uh, that's the goal. And so once it starts translating into ticket sales and all that kind of stuff, and you know, I'll feel better about it. But right now it's, I think it's taken its steps and, um, uh, it seems like, and I just tricked the algorithm the other day with some, you know, I don't know if you saw that. Did that? <laughs> I did. And you put, he put a uh, video up with Jason Aldean's picture. And what did you put as the caption? I put, uh, Jason Aldean, has done it again or something like that. <laughs> right. And the song playing is clearly not Jason Aldean. I mean, I mean, it does sound like something similar, like he would possibly sing without the, with, without a pop beat behind it. You know, it, it sounds like an older Jason Aldean song. 
Um, and, uh, but you could tell it was clearly not Jason Aldean. And then, but everybody in the comments is just like, I love him. I love his, all of his music. And they're like, this isn't Jason Aldean. And it's like, man, he's, oh yeah. It's a, it's, it's, Boy, you got me. <laughs> well, dude, and that translated huge into Spotify. Like just yesterday, like I was looking at my stats and it's like the graph is like, bum, bada, bum, bada, bum, and it's like, choo, right here. Uh, man, that's... <laughs> It's cool to watch it translate back and forth from TikTok to Spotify. Yeah, I'm just glad people are listening. Well, you could always eat little Debbie cakes like uh, Patrick did. So, you know, there's always that. There's always that idea. Don't don't do it all in one day, and don't eat the whole damn cake like he did. So, Man, like, I that's gonna be tough. <laughs> okay, well, you mean that's up to you. You know. You're you're a grown man. You can you can eat the whole damn cake if you want to, if you want to. Uh, but he's coming from like said he never eat one before in his whole life and don't like sweets to, and all to completely of eating all of it at once. You know, so all, you can imagine the, what his body thought. <laughs> he's a guitar player, dude. Oh yeah, they always want the they always want the sweet. Bad to the bone, man. Bad <laughs> All right, Matt, you got, you got a question? My question was, is uh, how many gigs you do a week and uh, what you got coming out new? Um, you got anything you're working on? Yeah, man. Um, I Gigging per week right now, man, I'm looking myself. Uh, the goal is to play at least three times a week. Um, I have that standing gig over in, at Magnolia, uh, which is just a hosting gig, but um, I do that on Tuesdays and then Try and be out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'm out this weekend and go spend some time at the lake. And um, next weekend, uh, I'm in Colorado for a few shows. And, um, you know, just trying to stay busy as much as I can. Um, trying to build these dang numbers so that a booking agent will be like, okay, I guess we'll book you. Uh, I got you. That's that's part of the game. So I, so I don't really, I don't know much about that, that part of the game. Um, how does... How does something like that work? I, again, I try to ask questions to where if, if somebody else is, you know, an independent artist and they're trying to do these things, you know, there's sometimes there's no better experience than listening to somebody else's. So that's actually going through it and understands how it works. Yeah. How, you know, how does, on that it, type of level, you know, I know there's a bunch of different routes for a lot of different things, but you know, you know, I started, um, with whenever I don't miss you started doing well. And now let me go back to this, like with, I don't miss you. That last song that I put out, I uh, I started, I, I had the song, because I'd, I'd done trial and error. I screwed up on a few songs that did really well on TikTok. I put them out too late, yada, yada, yada. But with I Don't Miss You, I played a little different, tried to, you know, I had the song ready to put out as soon as it started to hit on TikTok, if it did. Mm -hmm. As soon as it started to hit, I set a release date and kind of worked it that way and, you know, made it. Um, do the best that it can, and it's doing great. Um, and I lost my train of thought. Where was I going with that? What were you guys asking? <laughs> on the, on the, uh, see, you're just testing to see if we were paying attention to our own question. That's good though. Uh, as far as uh, booking agents and and um, what kind of gets you in the door with all of that stuff. What I guess what's the, what you what's your goal to get to that? So um, I started getting reached out to by. Uh, different people in the industry, whether they be distribution guys or label guys or whatnot, whenever that started doing really well. And um, I've reached out before to booking agents and labels and management and all kinds of stuff. And man, uh, it seems like it's always a locked door, or, you know, you know, nobody gets back to you or it was, gotcha. you know, it's kind of the worst case scenario in that way. But so whenever these people start, um, coming in you get a little little pump and you got to weed through them man it's there's a lot of snakes and a lot of like i got offered a distribution deal for my whole back catalog the next album for five years and they were only going to give me a small marketing budget and uh, they wanted 70 percent. and so you just got to know what not to do <laughs> that one was pretty easy to not sign <laughs> yeah you know, i got you it's going to do the same thing man just uh, know your worth <laughs> for lack of so, so uh, I get that I get that part um, and we'll get you to um, to do a song if, or two if, you, if you'd like to uh, but um, if uh, 
so as far as like booking agents and stuff like that, for you to get those doors open, you're really, you're, you're building a case for the most part, right? I mean, that's kind of what you're. Right. They want somebody who's already doing it, who's going to be easy from the book. Uh, a lot of times it's numbers, man. So a lot of times book agents aren't going to touch you if you have less than a hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify. Um, uh, some guys will take a chance. New guys, uh, like A and R reps, are going to reach out to you with less than that. But they just see something happening, and they want to watch it for a minute and see if it's going to do something. It's not necessarily all talent, right? 100%. I mean, I, not, I'm, I know there has to be talent there, but it's not strictly. Holy shit! Li listen to that song or listen to that voice. Sometimes it's. There's a lot more to the product that um, it's the train that's riding with it. You know what I mean? They see the train, they see the Benjamins, the the potential to make those Benjamins. So they they start gaining faith that this is the guy that can take us there. You know, that type of deal. Yeah. Hmm. I, yeah, I think uh, um, there's a lot of I. It, I mean, now we're all instant gratification, right? With social media and our 10 second videos and 15 second videos or whatever. It's all, everybody wants that quick dopamine hit and same with labels, man. It's like, and, I got you. Yeah. You know, those kind of guys are like, okay, um, this guy just had a viral thing. Let's grab on that for a minute. He's going to be gone in a minute. Like he'll be gone probably the next you know year or two years, but he's our dopamine hit for now. Let's get this guy in a minute after he starts doing things. And, if and he now, does last, that's, that's good, but we're, they don't, you know, you know, but if I'm at 100,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, I don't necessarily need a label. Like, I can start I need, doing your own. Investor, I'll find me an investor, but that's really what a label would be to me as an investor. So. I understand. Uh, an investor and some connections. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, a lot of connections. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, got, I get what you mean, though. But that's, that's something that, you know, a lot of us don't really uh, consider or think about or, or any of that part is... is you know, you, you, a lot of people think, you know, you have a good voice, you write a good song, you know, possibly a great song, and, and it's just going to, you know, Take off. eventually it's going to happen. But, but, you know, without the... Without you got to put the, your feet down on the ground. You got to put the work in to, to even if how, it don't matter how good the song is, you still got to, you got to hustle to get it out there to, to, to let other ears hear it that's going to, you know, I gotta it's going to carry it places. I got a buddy who's about 24 years old here in Fort Worth with one of the best voices, just a great, talented writer, but you don't, you don't want to put the feet down. And uh, it's, you have to. Well, I guess, uh, um, I mean, I would say this and then let you, you know, play, play a song or so. Um, but I'm only mentioning this name because everybody knows it, but like, I mean, look at the Chris Stapleton thing and how long, you know, he was, how long he was around and beating the pavement and, and, and playing, writing songs with, with everybody under the sun and everything, you know, everybody within the, within the business was screaming his praises, but it still took, you know, now you listen to him and you're like, that's stupid. Like, that's ridiculous. Cause it's always been there. Even like always. you hear like old demos or, you know, stuff that other people have cut, you'd be like, why didn't you cut this one? It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Matt, let's, uh, let's mute. So I'm going to, so this is a uh, song that you were asking about new music earlier. Um, I'm in the studio recording a five song EP and it's nearly done. I'm going to play out one of the ones off of that. And uh, I, I'm minus one string here. It's gonna work, I promise. We'll, we'll figure it out one way or another. <clears throat> but it's called Mexico. It goes like it. Thank you. 
thinking what I should have, but I hadn't done. I used to be rich. I used to have the love of a woman till I let her go. And now I'm begging for a buzz in Mexico. I sat down in the dirt beside him. He rolled up a smoke. He said, man, you don't look so good. Do you have a story of your own? I said, a matter of fact, my wife just left. All I got's what I got on. And I'll be down just like you in the dirt and dry to the bone. I guess gold can't buy me love, but it can damn show buy me a buzz. A long day in the hot sun. Thinking what I should have, but I hadn't done I used to be rich I used to have the love of a woman Till I let her go And now I'm begging for a buzz in Mexico Yeah, man, that's a good one. Appreciate that. That's Look a banger, that. dog. I love that. That was great. I like that edge you got there. I like that. Thank you, man. That's probably my favorite one off the EP coming up. Um, it uh, got me excited, man. Any dates you know of? I mean, is it coming soon or? Uh, coming real soon. I uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to release it um, as far as like all at once or like maybe two singles and then release the whole thing and um gotcha. it'll be within the next like you know three four months probably five months what um like i was thinking about like how to how to say to say this and not sound bad in any kind of way uh but that that sounds like you i mean does that make sense that 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 seems natural it sounds it seems like a your song you have me believing it for sure yeah i wrote it myself for sure um well thank you I'm, I mean, I haven't seen you play very many of your songs. I mean, I've only seen Jason Aldean do your songs, uh, but um, <laughs> but um, but still, uh, it just going off of that that song, I and mean, that sounds that seems fitting and like natural and all of that stuff. So I mean, that and that's that that's makes the way me it should be. Come to a acoustic show just to watch him. I mean, I'd like to hear his songs, him play it. You know what I'm saying? And then listen to the recordings. You know. You know what I'm saying? You know I wish I could have heard him like that first before I listened to his music earlier today, you know, because uh, that right there was damn good. Even like Thank they you. said with a toothless guitar, you know, it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I appreciate that a whole lot. That's, you know, that's kind of one of the things that I've been working on is trying to, I feel like the stuff that I've recorded pre I Don't Miss You, um, it's been hard for me to translate what I do acoustically into uh, the recording. That right there, man, to me, now this, this is my opinion, but <laughs> like I'm an outlaw guy. Like, you know, I like these boys and I like the outlaw guys and I like that, like edgy music. I, I really pick up on it. And that right there had an edge to it that, that I, I, you know, authenticity core, you know, just like, I mean, I, I could feel it, you know what I'm saying? And I, I like that. And, and I feel like sometimes when you record music, you lose that. You know what I'm saying? Where 
you know, people are hearing it a different way than what Corey's hearing it. You see what I'm saying? You just translate it the way you're hearing it. And, you know, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, record it that way, if that makes sense in a lot of ways. It is. Uh, I think we, man, I think we're real close with this new EP. Uh, so I'm, that's another reason I'm super pumped about it. The only instruments on it are my rhythm guitar, my rhythm electric, and then uh, bass drums, and then a lead guitar. And uh, that's it. That's so, you're, so you went into this EP with a goal to really be able to play it by yourself if you have to. Oh, 100%. I don't, man, I'm not a track guy at all. I don't like tracks. Uh, I'll play with a track. I mean, I used to, and in fact, some of my old songs need tracks so that it sounds... <laughs> So it's understand. Like all the 700 people are there. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's a, uh, yeah, my goal is to be able to just rock out on stage and it feel, and it has that same feeling as, you know, you're getting. So, yeah, yeah, that's, hey, I, I would buy that all day, every day, bud. I promise you, 100%. That, that was, that was great. I like, it's my style, though. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the kind of music I like to listen to. It's what tickles my fancy, as you say. <laughs> Is that one that came from that songwriters uh, from that um, that contest that you won? Is this is this uh, as far as the recording goes, or that song like uh, writing that song? Well, I, I guess it, I guess that when your recording is going to be as part of that deal, right? The recording is, yeah, man. So they, uh, I ended up getting. I don't even I don't even know the number as far as now, but it's it, it's it's good. So that's part of that, um, and. Uh, I wrote it maybe six months ago, um, kind of on a whim because this guy came into Magnolia Motor Lounge and gave everybody two dollar bills that was planned, and that's uh, you know found a cold beer for a dollar and a quarter, had a two dollar bill. Um, Dave, you can keep the change. Well, Dave uh, is the bartender at Magnolia Motor Lounge, and um, anyway, it's a whole, thing. and that's what started the whole song, but. Uh, have you have you played that at Magnolia Motor Lounge with Dave? Yeah, Dave loves it, man. <laughs> but Dave's a huge fan. He hadn't heard the uh, recording yet, but I talked to him last night, and uh, he's pretty pumped about it, man. I can't wait to show him once it's done. So you, um, so you added some of the some of the folks and the situations at Magnolia into the song. What what is a um, do you have a, a typical songwriting process or is this something that you, you know, that's all over the place? Um, it's been all over the place, but normally, uh, what happens is I'll just start playing the guitar. What happened with that when I was playing the, I got a new electric guitar and I was playing that and E sounds really good. Um, and so I was like an E and I was like, just feeling some good crunchy guitar. Up and along. Yeah. Yeah. I just started singing to it. Yeah, it mostly happens like that. I'm a melody guy before I'm a lyrics guy. I can right. tell that. I can tell that. So do you do you come up with those ideas and and kind of try to get them on your in your phone or, or you know get them saved as as quick as possible? My voice memos are filled with a bunch of stuff I would never want y'all to hear. Uh, <laughs> I, I got you. I bet mine's the same way. <laughs> No, My TikTok's yeah. full of stuff that you probably shouldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> I've deleted some TikToks because of that. I've deleted some stuff for sure. What, um, I mean, so is that something you have to, like, if that comes to you in, in the, you know, on the road or, or in bed, you, you have to, you got to kind of get it in some, you got to get it recorded in some kind of way, shape, or form soon. Um, I was talking to you about uh, Damn, I Need a Drink. And mm -hmm. the way that one came about was it was like I woke up at three o'clock in the morning one morning and my grandpa was asleep in another room. I was playing some shows in West Texas and I was staying at his place and uh, he was in the other room. I couldn't get my guitar out and start strumming. And so I had this melody in my brain and this song came out. The whole song came out. I have a voice memo of it. Like I'm tired. I'm like, you know, I think close to what I thought. And it's just... <laughs> are almost exactly what they turned out to be and um so man it's happened a lot of different ways that's the first time and last time it's happened that way for now but um yeah it's a you know i think that the songs are you know little gifts from god i think it um for me anyway like it i don't know how i'd write these things here i don't know how i do it it's just they just come out that's 
I still um, I still think back to as far as what we were talking earlier about re responses from um, you know when whether it's on TikTok or in person or whatever. I, I just I, um, I've only had it happen a few times personally where I play an, uh, an original or get asked to play an original at a cover gig and uh, and see actual response. You know what I mean? And that, um, I can only imagine how that really you know. When you're at, when you're as deep in it as as you are, um, how rewarding to keep. I'm sure it's to keep going. You know, it's uh, it's very rewarding, but you know you get the opposite side of the spectrum all the time too. I understand. I understand. You get the cr you get the crickets, but the but the but the handful of of uh, of positive things probably you know uh, is what is what hits. Keeps you going for sure, man. It's uh, it's life inside that little dark hole that you live in trying to write songs and get people to hear them. Uh, how does that, how does that feel as far as when you do a gig and you, you are back at your, your merch table or whatever after, after a gig and somebody that's never heard you, like you open up for, for Jared or whoever, somebody, you know, somebody's never heard you before and you, you realize you just made a fan, like. You just can't, you can't, it's a good feeling, man. It's, I don't know how to explain it um, or what to compare it to, but um, it's, you know, writing, and, or in my case, writing songs, and my goal is, I write them for myself, right? It's therapy for myself. I understand. Um, at the same time, like, I feel this need for other people to hear them, and whenever they do, and they relate somehow, or, um, you know, I've gotten some stories of, you know, folks in their relationships with I don't miss you and that sort of thing. But like people coming up and saying, man, I really dug your stuff. Let me buy a T-shirt. Let me do something to commemorate this event that I just, you know, that just happened. It's a uh, super humbling, man. Super humbling. Uh, you know, I, I, I asked that question uh, when I when I think about it, uh, because um I, again, I like for people that are listening and watching to understand how much that that stuff means. I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't mean anything to buy an Alan Jackson T-shirt, um, you know. But he does. But but there's an extremely good chance that he's never going to know that you bought that T-shirt. Uh, but when but when they come and shake your hand and buy that T-shirt, um, I mean that. And and I'm sure in some cases, uh, like I, I've, um, I don't know if you know a fellow named Gabe Lee. Um, uh, I saw him open up for American Aquarium and it was him and his wife together in a Toyota 4Runner, you know, and they were, uh, and I bought a, a, a record. I didn't know him. I just heard him. So I'm a vinyl guy. So I go and I buy it and she tracks him down, makes him come over and signs it. And as he's signing it, he's like, I just want you to know you just paid for my gas to Little Rock. Oh man. And I'm like, shit, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's let me uh, get a couple more of them. <laughs> yeah, actually, let me get three of those, a couple T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and then you then I look on his Instagram and they camp out overnight. They're you know they're sleeping in a hammock, you know, in a park and 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 you know in between here in Little Rock. You know what I mean? So I mean they're like, uh, and not everybody's doing that. They may just have liked doing that, you know, but um, but still, you know, it's a struggle, man. Regardless of you know what stage you're at, um, doing things that. It's yeah. I can't I can't see how folks would get to the point where they don't um, appreciate that kind of thing. Um, but you know, some people do. Um, but it's definitely easier to appreciate it in these um, early stages of things. I think. Uh, well, it's pretty yeah, because you're not you know there's not thousands of people. It's not an overwhelming thing, but it's uh, an, enough to you know. I mean, it's a blessing then too, obviously, but right, you know, like it's something that it's pretty near. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's obvious that Taylor Swift couldn't stand at the merch table and you know, and do that. You know what I mean? So, like that would be absolutely chaos. So, um, you know, but but still, um, yeah. I mean, that's that's got to be a a really a really cool thing. So, if anybody is in in these in the chat and and the, or listening to this in any kind of way. Uh, if you go to a show, um, especially the openers, uh, make sure you, you know, go shake a hand, buy a koozie, I mean, buy a shirt, you know what I mean? You never, you never know what that, uh, what that's going to do for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely, man. Just like Gabe Lee did. It helps us get to the next spot, dude. Seriously. You know, I understand it, but I never thought about it that way. That's a good, man. That's a good, that's a cool story. I, I, I never, I mean, like I said, I, I didn't know him from, from anything. I just like what he was doing. So, um, He's doing great. Some, somebody said they bought a hoodie from you in the chat there. Uh, who did? Who did you feel and signed it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's actually, he's a, man, that guy's cool. He, um, he's in Big Spring, Texas, and uh, his brother sold me a hat. I was, I had gone there to play a show, and I had forgotten my hat. I was wearing a ball cap at the time, and I always wear, like, a cowboy hat when I play. And uh, a lot of times, anyway. But I went there to, to buy a hat. I just wanted to, was going to buy a cheap hat to get me through the show, make me feel okay while I'm playing, you know, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. This guy sells me like a seven hundred dollar hat for like four hundred bucks, and um, turns out this guy's brother and um, you know this guy Yoki has been uh, promoting my stuff nonstop, crazy like on Instagram, and uh, he helps so much on TikTok and he's on all the like he's it's fans like that that help um, you know build us into bigger artists and put us in front of more people because they're so adamant about wanting other people to hear our stuff um so that guy's yeah he bought a hoodie man i signed it for him it's cool so I appreciate that. yeah that's i guess that's another thing is and you, i would bet that the people that are meeting you at the merch table are going to be the ones that spread your spread your music so i could like you said i as far as some people i understand that not everybody is a uh, an extrovert some folks you know are really struggle to, to be in front of people so i get that you know standing at a merch table shaking hands and signing things might not be extremely comfortable for a lot of people. I, I completely understand it, but business wise, um, that's good. That's, you're cult fans, baby. That's where you're, because once they have that interaction with you and if they enjoyed your music, they're not going to ever forget that experience. No <laughs> doubt about it. Never. You're right. Yeah. I, I, like, like I said, I didn't know who Gabe Lee was, you know, and he only got to play like five or six songs or something like that. So, but but they but the 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 two minute conversation after the gig, you know, I'll promote his crap and I'll be going to see him if he ever comes back through Memphis. So, yep. that's, um, I don't anticipate ever going to a gig and not buying merch. But you know, the the level of gig that I go to, is smaller shows and people that's up and coming and people that souls turn me on to somebody you know that you know, I don't I don't truly we, go we to take turns of big big shows right so yeah. yeah he was sending me 49 winchester stuff a couple years ago and then i sent him some you know we take turns on on sending each other folks that here you need to listen to this person so. right yeah yeah because you get stuck in your little bubbles too you know so it's new, man sometimes you need a new you know something new to to grasp onto and something that's just not always what you're going to listen to like so he's going to he's going to send me some stuff that's not my norm which i love because it takes me to a newer, newer, you know, headspace with the type of music that I'm listening to, you know. Oh, yeah. But I guess that's just uh, that's the joy of it, you know. That's that's what I love about music. It brings so many people in different different walks of life together, you know. That's a universal language, baby. Absolutely. So can we uh, can we hear another song? Yeah, let's see if I can. Okay, this one's going to be on the uh, EP as well. Um, <clears throat> we'll see if I can do this without this string. It's called uh, Never Gonna Not Be. And uh, this goes back to riding with folks in Nashville. This is probably one of my first rides in Nashville with a, a guy that ended up um, letting me live in one of his rooms, being my roommate um, for the last stint that I was there in Nashville. Does he, does he have uh, music and stuff out there as, as well, or is he a strictly a writer? He's uh, strictly a writer right now. I think he's going to start doing the artist thing a little bit more, but um, uh, he's he's got a little time. He's younger than I am. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, so this one's called Never Gonna Not Be. Here you go. Ain't the kind of man to drink myself to sleep. Turn off a song cause the words just cut too deep Yeah, I've never been on the broken side of the heart 
heartbreak But I guess some things change And some things stay the same Yeah, I'm never gonna not be Wondering if somebody's kissing you Hoping it ain't just me Drowning in the lonely Trying like hell just to make it through Yeah, I'm lying to myself tonight But a part of me knows the truth Yeah, I'm never gonna not be Never gonna not be in love with you In love with you I wish I'd get moved on Wake up with somebody new Cause lonesome likes to hold on Lonesome likes to think of you Looking back, I can see that I could have been better Just cause you think you found the one Don't mean you found forever Yeah, I'm never gonna not be Wondering if somebody's kissing you Like I used to do Hoping it ain't just me I'm a fan of of songs ending on the on, on words like that. For, for one, I, I like especially if it's the first line of a song. I, I, I like that 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 in general. So yeah, bookends, baby. Right. Man, you got you got a hell of a reaction in the in the in the chat and everything. Um, that was great. So that's that's mm -hmm. a whole new style though. That was that was totally different. Like your writing style was you know totally different on that song. That's shows your more vulnerable side i think you know as far as you know that was good though it was really good man i enjoyed it thank you very much so what um now i want to that song for some i guess the way you're playing and everything now i'm curious of what the drum beat is like <laughs> that's like uh, like that i don't know i'm just i'm just thinking like this driving drums like that's that was on the floor give me that pop I was, that's what I was listening to the way you were strumming, trying to trying to picture what you guys come up come up with. Speaking of that, how do you, when you go in the studio like that and you have these these songs in your head, these babies, how do you get them? How do you get, them out. Uh, get that to to your guys and and explain what you're what you're wanting or what you're hearing? Because I know in the end you're the one that's got to, you know, it's yours. You gotta um, you gotta live with it after the fact. So how do you? Yeah, uh, a lot of it, um, I think, is picking the right players. Uh, yeah. uh, so, if you pick the guys that fit the the mood of the record or the song or whatever it is, then you know those guys are gonna bring your thought to life. And if they're so you, they're gonna so have that, to be close. That's homework before before studio time ever ever happens. Yeah. 
So like in the studio with me, um, I had uh, Paul Douglas plays bass. Um, he, uh, I think he's gonna. So I think I might put out this EP under Corey and the Coyotes, um, which you know, take it okay. in man thing and um but i'm i don't know because i don't want to lose traction on what i've got going with my thing anyway that's a whole big thing but anyway one of the coyotes would be paul douglas right. uh, and, um, a drummer who wouldn't be a coyote because he's got a lot of things going on this guy's awesome his name's clint kirby so he played drums and um he was just super tasty you know he's good at feeling what whoever he's playing with he plays with a lot of folks but whoever he's playing with is wanting to happen and so he's you know He's a good leader too, as far as getting band in order and um, good all around producer and whatnot. And then uh, guitar, I had my buddy in Chicago. Um, he goes by Spaghetti Midwesterner on uh, Instagram, um, but his name is Matt Pittman, and he played uh, he played lead guitar on everything. And then I played this really crappy solo in one of the songs that I'm <laughs> taking out. Because I wanted to just do it because I, it was my song, and I was like, "This is gonna be cool for like a live thing." And I suck at guitar, and so it didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I'm gonna have somebody recut that, or have Matt recut that solo. But uh, you know, um, I think it's definitely picking the right players, having the right producer, and you know, getting getting folks that want to know your brain on everything. I'm sure it does make a difference as far as w with you um, kind of scouting everybody from, you know, whether they know you're scouting or not <laughs> or not. Um, how, how did that how did that work then? Um, with some of the guys you picked up like that, is that you just go in the shows? I met them all at Magnolia Motor Lounge, except for Matt Pittman in Chicago. And I met him through a buddy of mine, Cam Pierce, um, who y'all should probably get on this thing. Um, Cam's doing cool stuff. I think he's uh, touring with Sunny Swing right now. Um, but, uh, he's, uh, definitely on the older countryside and, uh, y'all would probably do a lot, but what, what was the name? Uh, Cam Pierce. Pierce. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tell you that. P I E R C E. Uh, All right. Yeah. There's Steve right there. Cam is fantastic. Uh, but, um, he's, uh, yeah, he's, um, well, he introduced me to Matt Pittman and Matt was his buddy from a while back and cut a record with Cam and um, Matt's just one of those same guys that, you know, he gets the style and he wants to get in your brain and figure out and make it the best that he can play for the song and not for himself. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Playing for the song. That's, that's, you know, I'm sure that's the key. And when you mentioned, uh, I mean, uh, as um, like when I started playing music, it was drums first, um, kind of what you were talking about. And, you know, a lot of my buddies, uh, whether they either play music or don't, like they're naming, you know, Neil Peart, Bonham, you know, and, and they're all great, of course. Uh, but, like, I always love Levon Helm, even Ringo, because you said tasty. And that's like what you, yeah, tasty. It's, it's playing for the song, and it's just, it's tasty. It's nothing extra special, uh, but it's, it's brilliant in its own, right there. own way. Yeah, in the pocket, like nice and just... It's cozy in the in the song. I like this. Yeah, that's that's my that's my uh, that's my style. It kind of always always has been for whatever reason. That feels like home for me. I respect everything that all the rest of the guys do. You know, no doubt about it. But um, sometimes but when, the virtuoso isn't the right pick. Well, yes, yeah, for and for everybody, yeah, definitely. If you had somebody a really really show off drummer, then it's going to change everything that you're doing. Drums, absolutely. Yeah. Have you seen those TikToks recently? It's like drums, how drums can change the whole song or something like that? No, but I would. Oh, dude, there's this guy yeah. that does that kind of thing, and he'll play different beats on different songs, and it changes the whole of the song. And it's, it's uh, just the way the drummer plays. And... I'm sure that's, uh, I'm sure it's entertaining for some people, but I'm sure in your situation, it's, uh, it's kind of really eye opening to go, yeah, I really got to pick the right person. You do, man. It changes a lot. I and mean, that could, Man, in my opinion, drums make or break a record anyway. Um, I know we're not talking about just drums, but in this case, yeah, drums make or break a record. And you have to, you know, have good drums well, to go on and then have a good play. I mean, well, you got you to have the, you got to have the songs, but, but uh, you got to have the quality songs too. But I understand what you mean. That's just the, 
the uh, the substance or the uh, like like you said the the tasty part of it, you know. Yeah. Um, so we'll go. I guess we'll uh, we'll go through a few kind of random random questions and uh, get you out of here and everything. One, I appreciate you hopping on. Um, it, everybody that's uh, that's listening or, or watching right now, make sure you go follow him on all of his socials, um, and uh, make sure you follow him on uh, Spotify and, and and anywhere you stream your music, so that you'll you'll know when when the new stuff happens. You know, because uh, like he said, the numbers um, they you know as they grow, they mean a ton to uh, everyone around the music business. That it gives some credibility and some and helps open doors. You know. I say credibility like it's a, I don't mean that in, in a bad way, but it it, uh, it it just helps the doors open a lot easier. Gives you credibility to people that have never heard of you, for sure. Yes. Yeah. When all they're looking at is a, is a couple of accounts and some numbers, um, it's a it's an easier sell. So. For sure. Coming um, to West Tennessee anytime soon? Anywhere close to West <laughs> Tennessee? Uh, yes. Um, I don't know how soon, but I'm trying to get up to Nashville here in the next, uh, you know, month or two. I've been trying to get back for a minute, but last time I was there was probably like three months ago. I'd like to come to the show, man. For, really for gigs? Yeah, man. Um, no, yeah, it was a it was a house party. Um, who did I play that with? It was with Cam, and then it was with uh, Jason Eady. Um, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, dude. I'm gonna get to get to see him in November. Uh, I've never seen him live or just acoustic by himself in a in a home before, and I was impressed for sure. Very impressed. He, he's got a like you, you mentioned, uh, unique and tasty or whatever. He's got a he's got a, a unique way of, especially in the Texas country world. He's got a unique way of playing. He does, man. <laughs> you know, we were talking about that too, um, as far as you know, I was telling you about. Uh, being able to take it from acoustic to fully produced and still maintain that the feeling of the song. And uh, he was having the same problems, man. He, he just found, mm. he found a guy now that, um, that he's recording with and that it's coming out kind of the way that he wants it now. And uh, we were talking about the same thing. It's interesting how you know, a lot of the same people or a lot of the people have the same, um, I guess, journeys through this whole thing. He seems to play kind of a, a, a lot more of um, like a, I guess like a Delta blues sort of thing where he's it, with the rhythm that he that he makes with his hands also, um, so I can see where he's got to keep that in mind uh, when he's yeah. when he's playing live or, or by itself. I mean, yeah, sure, um, that's definitely a thing. Yeah. All right. Um, so as far as. Uh, dream venues to play um you know if you're uh what are some 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 dream venues some goals that you would you would love to knock off that list uh i was just talking about this earlier um but uh red rocks definitely is on the one of the top like top top of the list and it just that place seems um magical i went one time for a concert you know after i had told myself that the only time I'm ever going to go is whenever I'm playing Red Rock. <laughs> but I went, well, who, you know, now the next time I go will be when who, I'm Who did you go see? You're going to laugh. Kygo? I don't know who that is. Good. It's like an EDM guy. Like it's, uh, oh, okay. It was not my favorite experience at all. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. Uh, Matt, you got a random question you want to ask? Random question. Uh, if you had, well, let, let's do this. If you had a random, well, random, I guess, guilty pleasure of, of who you listen to, like a, just a guilty, like, you know, it would make somebody laugh if you really knew that you listened to it type thing, who would it be? All right, so precursor, I do not listen to a whole lot of music anymore. Um, I'm scared it's going to mess with my writing and I feel like I'm in a good spot. However, I was never ashamed of Nickelback or Creed like we were talking about. <laughs> and I will never be ashamed of them. I still enjoy the, I don't know any guy and I like good hooks and stuff. And That's right. So you, so you listen to them with arms wide open, huh? Arms 
They're my sacrifice, essentially. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, I'm digging I can't think of down. another song. I was trying to think of another song off the top of my head. Oh, God, I lost it. Um, so um, just an, another question so that everybody in the, in the chat can, and, and listening can relate. Um, uh, just kind of an average, how many gigs a, a year do you do you have you really ever a added that up? Never added it up, but oh, okay. if I was to guess, um, at least 150, probably close to 200, 225 gigs a year. I mean, I play during the week, man. I play in the weekends. And, um, the goal is to be a weekend warrior and just play Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays and let my um, Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays be, and Wednesdays be for, you know, hopefully a family. Um, yeah. I understand that's that seems to be um that seems to be the uh the 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 goal for a, a lot of people like um we've had like adam hood on and different different folks and that's kind of seems to be even when he was doing the writing uh thing it would still be either you know write during the in the, most of the week and then be home the last half or vice versa you know toward that thursday friday saturday and be back home you know he's always had uh it, or it seems like he's always had a family with him. Um, that, uh, I don't know. I think that that's a tough thing to juggle, man. So for him to maintain that through his career, and I feel like I've watched him do that, is that's cool. That's, oh, yeah. And who are some folks that you've, that you've uh, you know, along the way kind of ran into or met that you were just surprised to – to be around there's there is there any of those any of those moments or have you had those moments yet yeah man um chase rice is probably one um you know i spent some time hunting with him in uh oklahoma and uh i was doing video for a tv show and so it was it ended up me and uh being him myself and then uh cody cannon uh from whiskey myers mm -hmm. song swapping in this lodge and uh that i didn't i never ex in a million years would expect something like that to happen um just you know meeting folks i was at uh winter's bar in nashville of course this is in nashville so you kind of expect it but you know chris young pops up and he starts playing golden tea in the at lunchtime after a ride i was eating lunch with a buddy of mine dan hudson and, um, here comes chris just going in there playing golden tea and then like every you know, 15 minutes or so, he'd start singing. Like, <laughs> it was, it was, it was uh, you know, you, you don't expect to have, I don't expect to have a lot of interactions, but man, I've, I've been blessed to meet a lot of cool people and have some really cool experiences with a lot of cool people, man. This, yeah, that's, this included for sure. Um, I'm blessed to be on you guys' podcast. This is interesting. I love it. Yeah. That's cool. I appreciate that. Um, Matt, you got another, Every, there's folks in the chat that want another song. If, if you're comfortable with that, you, you're more than welcome to show one. If, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, five stringed out, then completely understand on on, on that too. But uh, you need to play all this. I'll be here all night. Uh, <laughs> I, I understand. I, I, as long as we're kind of in tune, I'll, I'll do one. Um, keep in mind, I'm still missing the string. Let me get a capo. I'll play you this, uh, this other song that's on the record. I've screwed this song up about the last three or four times I've played it live. <laughs> and it's mainly because I started with a whistle, and it's a... Uh, should be able to get it through. This song is called Long Gone. We'll see if I can... Uh, you, might, um, you might hear the whistle trying to figure itself out in just a second. And then once I figure it out, then I'll go. But it goes like this. Here you go. It's 19 in a small town, living on prayers my mom and dad found. Trying to keep my brother and me above ground I thought I knew what love was But hell, I ain't even sure if I know now About 
21, she was packing up her things. I was doing what I could to keep her wearing that ring. She took it off, put it in the mailbox. She was long gone. She was long gone like that liquor that was sitting on that shelf Long gone like those feelings that she said she'd never felt She was gone for good and gone for good ain't wrong See the thing about love is it never stays gone long Been a few years now, met another girl, ain't it funny how you feel on top of the world and then you find out what you thought was good love was just some five year, five year hangout. She called me up in the middle of the night, didn't want to come home, and I didn't want to fight, so I packed it up. Put it in my truck and I was long gone Yeah, I was long gone Like that liquor that was sitting on that shelf Long gone like those feelings that she said she never felt I was gone for good And gone for good ain't wrong but See, the thing about love is Never stays gone long. She was long gone, like that liquor that was sitting on that shelf. Think I'll buy another bottle. And toast it to myself Cause she's gone for good And gone for good I ain't wrong yeah, I'll be long gone Like that liquor that was sitting On that shelf Long gone like those feelings She said she never felt I'll be gone for good And gone for good I ain't wrong See, the thing about love is it never stays gone long. Yeah, the thing about love is it never stays gone long. We're out of tune now, but we got there. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, again, it sounds it, all that sounds like uh, natural. So, that, yeah, I definitely. It. It, it's good stuff. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like you're covering anybody's songs or anything. It sounds sounds like you. Um, man, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I'm trying, trying to give the feed, get the get the feedback. We're not just blowing smoke here, so. Um, so one thing I thought of while you were singing, and uh, then we'll let um, let Matt ask the the final question. Um, uh, who's I guess who's somebody that somebody people say you sound like such and such. Do you get any of that? Because I can't like I, I'm listening to you sing, and I don't really get I, no, nobody just comes to mind like you, you sound like such somebody. Um, I haven't. You don't really get that? It's an Aldean sometimes, but I think the reason that I got that was I had the song, that Blame It On Me song. and The way it was recorded? The way it was recorded. Um, and, uh, I, 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 like I, I can see that. Whenever I shave and stuff, but um, otherwise, really, man, I don't. Uh, yeah. I try to pinpoint it because I try and like make these stinking TikToks that I want to be like, hey, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want right. to the Listen to my music, whatever it takes. And um, yeah, so I can't figure it out. <laughs> well, you, you could start a series and be like, you know, some people say I sound like, 
<laughs> inner like you know somebody that's not like you yeah, you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> exactly some people say i sound like keith urban and then just play something you know whatever Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um that i mean that's that's that seems par for the course because i can't think i can't think of anybody that you really sound like you know what i mean that's that's not a bad thing, but you know, a lot of people can't say that either. So that's, a, that's probably a, one of my favorite compliments. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad I come up with it. <laughs> uh, all right, Matt, hit him with hit him with a tough question there. Hit him with the real tough question. Uh -huh. How many women do you keep on the tour bus at all times? No, I'm just kidding. Dude, most of the time, it's me and a pizza. And a dog. And a pizza. Yeah, I got you. My dog Ty. You want to see Ty? Hold on. <laughs> uh, he's, hey, he's a, I understand. He's a big fan. That's what I get to. He'll be snoring in a minute, right? Man, life, yeah, he will be. He's snoring right now. Um, you know, life on the road is not what the movies tell you it is. Yeah, maybe it is for, absolutely. Maybe it is for some bands, but man, I'm a <laughs> I'm a 38 year old God fearing man who's trying to find a family, and that ain't how to do it. <laughs> No, it ain't. It ain't. No, I'm just no, messing no. with you. I know the you real know. serious question, though, the real serious question everybody wants to know. This has been a staple of this show, and it, it, it started out as a joke, and it's been it, – it's become a staple. So this is something i got to ask you for sure. And um, I know you know what a Little Debbie is, right? Yeah. What is your favorite Little Debbie? Bro, it's, got, it's either Nutter Butters or the Oatmeal Pies. Our nutty buddies, the oatmeal pies. I can dig it. Hey, I can dig it. Um, which happens to be my mom's favorite. I think she's in here somewhere. Um, but anytime I'm over at their place, man, she uh, has them right there by the bananas. And I'll eat it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds like my house. <laughs> I have the fruit right next to the sugar. That's right. That's right. Natural, natural sugar. Well, yeah, to to even it all, or yeah, to make it feel like it's healthy. Um, what? Um, Wait, hold on. What's y'all's favorite little Debbie snack? Probably at Christmas tree, or you know, your seasonal cakes. You know, your zebra cakes. You, you know, the Fourth of July cakes. You know, all that kind of seasonal stuff. Them the ones I like probably. I, I'm I'm with the I'm the I'm the uh, me and Bill Corbin have this in common. We're we're the double decker uh, fudge round guy. <laughs> okay. Man, them's, yeah, them's the, the OG fudge round too. Not not you know not just because of Oliver Oliver Anthony, but there's only one oh, yeah. that I seriously have a problem with. You know, and then. <laughs> The rest of them I'll eat. You know, I'm a fat guy, so fat people love cake. You know, that's just the way it is. So, you know, I like most of all of it, but I'm not going to eat just one particular one. And, you know, I think everybody in the comments <laughs> might know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a Star Crunch hater. I hate I Star say, Crunch. Man, I was about to say Star Crunch. Uh, can you yeah. just make your Star Crunch? Good job. See, see, see. <laughs> I love Star that's Crunch. funny. That's yeah. funny. Well, all right, man. Well, we'll let you uh, let you get back to to your stuff there. But we appreciate you hopping on. Um, everybody, make sure you go follow Corey on all the all the streaming platforms, all the socials, and everything. Be interactive. Um, I don't think people realize how much. Uh, like I mentioned, being interactive at shows and coming shaking hands and and uh, buying a koozie, how much that stuff actually helps. But so does being active on social media. You know, when you see the post. Hit the heart button and share the thing. Don't just scroll past it because then it dies and, and doesn't go anywhere. Um, share it to your past. friends. I used to be that scroll past guy, and I started trying to be deliberate about you know pushing that button and making a comment or something. I don't. I don't think uh, it, until you really have a reason to dive into, you don't think about it. You know. You don't so. know what it all means. I mean, you think it's just not, no big deal, but I mean, but that most one, like. Most of the time, that that can be uh, that can really be, um, from what I understand, anyway, the way the way TikTok works, anyway, when you release a, a video, it goes into a small stream of the people that follow you, and it has to kind of have momentum to get out of that stream into the into the next, you know, to in, onto the FYP to where yeah. other people find it, and the only way it gets out of your friends is um, is by interaction. So. All comes back to numbers, soul. That <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately.
Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's just uh, folks that um, folks that are uh, that enjoy what you're doing. If they want to help, that's that's you know, they might not ever be able to come to Texas to a show, um, but you know, that's one way that they can they can help. So, absolutely, man. I hey, let us know when you come to Nashville, man. I'd really like to come see a live show. I'm, I, me, if me and Soul got to load up, I mean, we're just right down the street from each other, not very far, so we we'll can meet up and grab a couple grab boxes of the little Debbies and. And yeah. nutter butters, and I'll hold them up. <laughs> Sign my nutter butters. <laughs> I'm not them, but I'll eat them. All right. That's right. We'll bring bring uh, we'll bring nut, uh, yeah nutty buddies and and uh, and bananas. What we got you covered then? Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all fellas for sure, man. Matt, so right. thank you. For no problem. We'll see you later. We appreciate you, Mike. Thank you, brother. All right. Yes,